what's up everyone eric grass the guy with the eye here sorry i have to use this computer setup i'm down with the camera right now but nikon is turning 100 today july 25th 2017. i'm gonna give you a quick little history thing i'm not gonna go too too far into it i just want to give my thoughts on 100 years of nikon uh, i've been primarily a nikon photographer uh, during my entire career and i want to mention just a real quick mirrorless and especially the nikon d850 that nikon confirmed also that they're going to be announcing so let's talk about 100 years of nikon and a little bit of their future Let's go. But Nikon has turned 100 today. July 25th, 25th, 1917, Nikon began, but uh, they weren't known as Nikon at the beginning. They were known as Nippon Kungaku KK. I said that horribly. I 100% know, but just to know that that's what it is. And their focus was more or less on optics, not on lenses and all that kind of stuff. That wasn't really the thing back then to concentrate on. Uh, so they also did like range finders, uh, microscopes, uh, scopes for guns and everything like that. This was probably the biggest thing, and they still do this to this day. They still have uh, very popular selling binoculars and everything like that. So this was one of their biggest things that they've done. So a year later, after they ramped up production and everything, essentially they combined with Fuji Lens. There's other names that you could throw into that. And they started research on developing dedicated optical glass and, and doing in production. Now, this merged company then in 1923 would begin actually testing, melting, uh, dedicated glass and then this would soon to come find what we what we would really want in uh, 1929 the company first started to make their lens it's called the uh, An antar uh, 12cm f 4.5 so just th they're in the game at this point and this was a big step for the company in 1932 in just kind of the landmark perspective nikon officially registered and trademarked their name as nikor which was essentially the combination of the uh, nippon kagaku kk combined together and the r's to really make it stand out so that's kind of where that comes from and in 1948 as you see right here uh, you get the nikon model one or i uh, it, whichever one you want to go for it. And this was a big step for the company as it was really what set them off, especially into the creative and photography world, especially in regards to film. Obviously, there was no digital back then. Um, but the, the next big step for the company was in 1959 when the Nikon F came out. And with this series, they took a ton of feedback and comments and criticism for whoever used the, the, the Nikon model I and one and put it into this. And this really started one of the most popular film series between the Nikon F series, the Penta Prism, and, and going down the line. The Nikon F3 is one of the most popular cameras. And B&H is still selling them for thousands these days. So as you can see, that that's really what set it out. The other big thing that Nikon became, became to get known for uh, was in 1977, they developed the widely popular and it's still popular if you get your hands on it uh, at a good price because it's extremely rare. The Noct Nikkor 58mm f1.2. I've used this lens one time for like three minutes because I have a friend who had it for a short amount of time. Uh, it produces a look that's amazing. Uh, I it blows away a lot of the things nowadays, a lot of the, the things out there. It's just the look that you can't really replicate. So this is what they became known for. And still to this day, Nikon has some of the best optical glass, especially in regards to uh, still photography and everything out there. That's why people love to hold on to their lenses. That's why I love Nikon lenses and everything like that. They are very, very good in regards to stills quality. And that even shows leaps and bounds, especially in recent times with the Nikon D750, the D810, and how the glass holds well onto that and to those sensors. In 1991, the Nikon D1 uh, is what then became uh, unlocked a lot. And Nikon said they essentially wanted to combine the superb image quality that they've had with their, with their cameras. They wanted to have the ease of use like their other cameras. And they also wanted ultra high speed. And that's essentially what it did. And really this blended into two more, three more big successes. And one of them being very, very impactful. In 2007, you had the Nikon D3 and the Nikon D700. The Nikon D700 is probably my favorite camera of all time. And I think one of Nikon's best cameras of all time. Anyone who shot that camera pretty much is in agreement with that, especially since a lot of people still use it to this day. And you can find it for an amazing price with that. 
But in 2008, Nikon was actually innovative and they had the D90, which actually gave high definition 720p video in a DSLR. And that was groundbreaking at the time. The Canon 5D Mark II shortly followed and also was, um, you know, very progressive with that as well. But that is essentially the 100. Once again, I, I know I took a lot out, off of this, but this is the main gist of all that stuff. 100 years of Nikon. Nikon essentially, like a lot of things, start from nothing. Sh uh, very, very short. I mean, once again, from 1917 to 1929, uh, they, for about 12 years, they didn't even produce anything re for the photography industry. And they first came out with their lens in 1929. They got their name in 1932. So you see there's that big gap. And Nikon is still a big name to this day. Now, in regards to this day, I think Nikon is still tops in the photography industry market they have struggled the past two years though be it still one of the big names next to a nikon and a, you know a canon uh sony's getting up there and everything like that if you like stills nikon is very very popular and as i said because of the quality and everything that they make that's how i feel as well um not to say the other brands are bad they're absolutely not but nikon just has something to them i've always said that and once again the d700 is my favorite camera of all time they're just not getting that progressive on the video side of things. And the argument used to always be, well, if you're a still shooter, you shoot Nikon. If you're a Canon shooter, you, you, you concentrate more on video. Canon's obviously good for stills, but that's what usually what it is. A lot of the things now are turning into a video market and Nikon isn't necessarily catching up with that. Canon has the, one of the best autofocuses in there and everything, but it's, it's falling behind in regards to that. But if you're into stills, I don't worry about 4K. Don't worry about any of that stuff. This is the stuff that really you get into. The focusing speed, the build quality, the sensors, all that kind of stuff, be it whoever makes them. This is what Nikon is putting out. Nikon is now 100 years old. And there goes a lot a lot to saying that and to their future. Now, to their future, you're, you're hearing that mirrorless now nike because of their getting their back pushed up the wall against all the mirrorless options out there especially even fuji and sony panasonic blah 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 they have to look into mirrorless options with their backs up they got to look in the mirrorless and over 100 years that would be another leaps and bounds steps for what they offer the other thing now is the nikon d850 the nikon d800 and d810 were definitely a very big pro uh, progression for Nikon. Their dynamic range, especially in the D810, is one of the highest on the market, uh, even right now to this day, even though now it is years old. The Nikon D850, they announced um, that, they're, that they're going to. There is no leaks. There is no nothing out there. So if you see anything uh, with information or leaks, it's absolutely not true. But today, Nikon officially did announce that they're developing the D850, and they're saying that it's going to be the their best camera of all time and it's going to be something that pretty much every from a hobbyist to a professional content creator will use now the thing that i do like is that they do say multimedia content creator because that would probably mean something this is obviously going to be full frame it's going to be some kind of flip screen or something like that they're going to appeal to a lot of people with this camera now they already have 4k on it canon is very against 4k at this point they want to keep you in their cinema line um, and the 5D Mark IV, once again, that's not a great 4K. I have a feeling they're going to do something very interesting with the D850, but I'm not really going to guess. I just want it to come out. I want to see what it's going to do. And it'd be really interesting to see the price point. And I don't know if they're really going to try to stay where they're, they're at currently when they release these D800 cameras, or if they're going to try to compete with like a Sony A9, which I hope not because the A9 was marketed towards the D5 and the Canon 1DX2. So this is everything right now. Nikon has done a whole hell of a lot over 100 years, and it really shouldn't be discounted over the past couple years. The argument is, have they been very innovative over the, over the past like two or three years? Probably not as much as they should be, but on the still side of things, Nikon is still up there on tops. And I, I don't think a lot of people will argue that, be it where you fall as a fanboy or not. They have to adapt. They're not going to die. I just think that, what this D850 could be as a big point to how they're going to celebrate their 100th year. And once we know more of that, we'll talk into that. But July, uh, July 25th, 1917, Nikon began. July 25th, 2017, Nikon's in a little bit of trouble. Um, you know, they, unfortunately, they had layoffs and everything like that just, just the other year. But 
We'll see how it goes. The Nikon D850 and mirrorless cameras look to be what's going to happen in the future. When we learn more about the D850, now that we know it's called the D850, we will talk about it more. But that's 100 years of Nikon, and I've absolutely loved having them for all of my career. My first camera was the Nikon D3000. I got into photography like that. I didn't do film first. I learned film after that. Um, but since having that camera, I've gotten to be where I am, wherever that is, in this small little world of ours. What camera did you have? What do you think was great over the 100 years of Nikon? And is it anything relevant to you? Let me know down below. 100 years of Nikon, thank you for everything you've done. But catch up, you really need to. And let's see what you can do with 100 more. And uh, you will have the, the, other, the other guys trying to, you know, nudge you along. So catch up, do something cool, and you'll keep people. That's all I got.